a Hungarian named Tibor Galai, who was a contemporary of Erdős, proved in 1967 a characterization, and he listed all the, comp all the forbidden graphs. So his theorem is going to be a graph G is a comparable graph if and only if it does not contain as an induced subgraph any one of the graphs shown in part one or the complements of the graphs shown in part two and part three. Now, these, these lists are extensive. And when you start drawing pictures of graphs, uh, drawing the graph or its complement is, is the same. But he chose this because not only did the research go this way, it's that the pictures look a lot nicer. Now, look at these graphs. So you can't have any of these. Okay, the first family on the left are the odd cycles. And that's where we started today's lecture with, that you can't have an odd cycle. And then you can't have any one of these graphs that kind of looks like a seashell with two dingles. <laughs> And you can't have any of these more, more complicated. You can't have any of those. You can't have the complements of any of these. Now, look in the upper right-hand corner, and you see the even cycles. You can have an even cycle. You can't have the complement of an even cycle. You can't have the complements of any of those graphs, any of those families. And there's more. You can't have these. And by the way, uh, when I was getting ready for class, I realized there's a missing dot in the upper left-hand corner where those lines come together. There's supposed to be a vertex right there. Uh, I tried to patch it, but I couldn't find the original file. So imagine that there is a vertex where those lines come together. And then there's these little ones, too. That's the full list. That paper runs 40 pages. It was written in German because at the time, in the early, uh, Galai was already a, an older man in the 60s. So he, he was... Uh, a citizen of Hungary during the, uh, the communist days. And so um, English, Western languages were not, uh, not fashionable at the time. So like many of the uh, well-educated uh, Hungarians, he wrote in German. And of course, he spoke German fluently also. Uh, and, but because that paper was written in German, many researchers in the West uh, they, they were sort of aware of it, but they weren't aware of the full content. And I was one of them. And so <clears throat> in the 70s and the early 80s, when I actually forced myself to read uh, a 40-plus page paper in German, uh, I, did, I really understood the power of what uh, Galai had done. Now, <clears throat> we studied a forbidden theorem before, and that was the Kuratowski theorem. So essentially, planar, gra planar graphs are characterized by excluding two things. What are those two things? A K5 and a K3-3. Oh, OK, uh, plus the homeomorphs. But there's really, there's really only two things that you're excluding. In the Galai characterization of comparability graphs, there's bajillions of them. They're all over the place. So you see how somebody like me gets examples for a class like this, where I want to say, OK, here's a graph which is not a comparability graph. <clears throat> what I do is I go to Galai's paper, pull out one of the little examples, and put it on the slide. And then we verify that. It's not a comparability graph. So this is a massive paper. 
And it's amazing, in retrospect, <clears throat> that Galai was able to reduce the argument, to get the argument, and to reduce it to a finite number of pages. Of course, <clears throat> it's extremely hard. I'm, I'm, I want you to sort of generally be aware of it, but, I, but you, you are not going to be asked a question like, uh, draw pictures of all of the forbidden graphs in Galai's characterization of comparability graphs. I couldn't do it. Uh, I'm certainly not expecting you to. However, a little exercise like we have just done, I could give you a modest size graph and ask you, is it a comparability graph? And you should be, at, you should be able to carry out the algorithm that we have just learned to either produce an orientation of it that's transitive or to show how you get a conflict which proves that it is not transitive. There's a question in the back. Is there any particular reason why they are labeled like one? Uh, let me repeat your question. She's asking about the labeling. That's the way Galai labeled them. And so if you want to have a conversation with somebody and you say, oh, in the family that Galai talked about, uh, I want graph number three. So somebody will know what you're talking about if you, if you say G3, that's the one on the upper right. They're all slightly different. Now, you, you can call them anything that you want, but that just means that you're now using the same labeling, the same terminology that Galai used. That's all. <clears throat> 